Hello friends, welcome back to our course Math Essential for Machine Learning and today and in the next few videos we are going to discuss about gradient descent. Now what it means, how is it helpful and eventually some of the issue it has, we will discuss everything and we'll try to keep it as simple as possible. But overall, uh, you know, many of us have had shivers and nightmares uh, because of this gradient descent concept. <laughs> okay, so we will look at a very familiar problem that we saw earlier is the housing price prediction based on a single variable which is area in square feet. Okay, and using that example, we'll try to explain the gradient descent. Okay, so our main intention is to be able to predict the sale price of a house which is as close as possible to the original value. So in this graph, the x-axis is representing the area in square feet and y-axis is the sale price. Okay, so this is sale price. All right, and the blue cross uh, that you see here are the original price for the respective square feet of the house. And if I connect the dots, then my graph would look something like this. Okay, so this is the original uh, prices of the house. Okay, so what we do next is try to draw different straight lines. Okay, so we could have, you know, started somewhere here, then keep moving, keep moving, and then we could have continued drawing like this, right? These are the different, and we could have also changed our angle of this line or the slope of this line. So I could have drawn something like this, like this, and so on. There are so many lines that we can draw, right? Okay. And in, I'm just keeping for, uh, for just for a clear visibility, I'm just keeping these three straight lines here, okay? And this purple line is nothing but the average of the, you know, the sale price and so on. Okay, so the, the initial attempt is nothing more than a guesswork, okay? But the question comes, how do we choose which line to draw, right? Uh, what is the variable here? So... From our uh, knowledge of straight line, we know that, you know, uh, y is equal to mx plus b, right? That is the equation of a straight line, okay? And if I have to relate it with our current example, then y is the sale price and x is the area in square feet. So that means, uh, you know, by changing the different values of m and b, we can draw different lines. And for each lines that we draw here, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to calculate how wrong you know we have been in our estimate now this thing you know how wrong you know is some is commonly called as the cost function or the loss function in the machine learning world just to we need a function basically to explain how wrong we have been and in our case we are going to use the concept of sum of squared error okay and the function is nothing but the summation of the and I subtract the actual price okay minus the predicted price whatever I made prediction so prediction will be based on this uh, straight lines here these straight lines here okay and I take a square of that I do the sum I take the square root and I get a value for the sum of squared error okay then what I do I change the m and b again and you know say for example I increase both m and b or we, uh, you know, uh, we, we calculate the sum of squared error again and see whether my sum of squared error has increased or decreased, right? So the, uh, this way we can see, you know, how we can change the val different values of M and B and, uh, you know, come up with the different error values, okay? So the question then comes is how to actually, you know, change the value of M and B? Right. Of course, I know that by changing m and b, we can get different uh, you know, sum of squared error. But the question is, should we increase both m and b? Or should we keep uh, m fixed and change b? Or should we keep b fixed and change m? There can be so many combinations, right? So uh, the, this is where you know we are going to use the concept of uh, the derivative that we have just saw in our previous videos. And we are going to use that concept here. Okay. But the main intention is, you know, it could also happen that, you know, I'm increasing M and then reducing B. That way, my uh, sum of squared error is decreasing. That could also happen. But at this point of time, I don't know. So the first thing that we do is we are randomly with a guess. We're starting with a guess 
and then the result that I see I first say reduce both M and B and see whether a, you know, the SSE has reduced or not if it is a reduced then I will keep decreasing both M and B and continue until my you know I reach to the minimum value of that squared error okay I would also try with uh, you know m increasing or b decreasing and b increasing or m decreasing and all this combination eventually i want to come up with a combination of m and b such that my sum of squared error is the mo most minimum value okay and that we will solve by hand okay so let's uh, you know stay tuned and keep watching and in our next video we are going to solve this by hand so until then have a great day and take care